Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, certified UK trainer, and also that QuickBooks chap on the internet. Now, as a certified UK trainer from QuickBooks, I do get the privilege of understanding a little bit beforehand of what's coming, when, and where. But when something gets released to QuickBooks, I want to make sure you guys are the first to know about it. So if you want to make sure that you're up to date on everything QuickBooks related, make sure you give a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out. Now, saying that, what are we going to be looking at today? Well, if you're not aware, then from the 1st of March 2021, the way we account for VAT for our CIS clients, our construction industry clients, is going to completely change. Effectively, a new VAT code has been released where if you are involved in the CIS and you are able to be able to demonstrate that the work you do is under the criteria that's been set out in the new rules, then you can use and opt for a reverse charge option on the VAT. What that effectively means is you as the contractor won't need to charge VAT on what you're selling, but the person who's going to be recording that cost in their books they need to account for it as what's called a reverse charge. Sounds really complicated, but I promise you, once you get through those first couple, you'll be absolutely ha happy with it. Now, we did a more detailed breakdown of exactly what that means in the video, so I'll link to it here. And what we're going to look at today is how QuickBooks has changed and is ready for this. So let's jump straight in there. Yeah, I told them I can be a fighter if you want. I'll be there to catch you All right, first of all, we need to get ourselves into QuickBooks as always. So let's go and let's get into QuickBooks. Now I've created a brand new customer, very aptly named called CIS Customer. And remember for CIS to work, you need to make sure is CIS contractor has been ticked here once you've included your setup. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press new transaction and I'm gonna to go to invoice. From the invoice option just here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've got CIS labour standards shown here so that it starts working out my CIS. Um, and then as soon as I put a rate in there, my CIS is going to be calculated for me just here. So the key thing to make sure is that your invoice date is the 1st of the 3rd, 21 forward. Anything before that, these codes won't be available. And all we need to do then is pick the new reverse charge for CIS. So I'm going to say it's the 20% reverse charge for CIS. And notice how it's not added any VAT on at all. All it's done is taken my CIS into consideration, which I'm expecting from this one. And then I can press save and close. So now looking at my VAT report, as you can see, as you can see from here, what we're showing is only £2,000 of sales, no VAT. It's exactly what we're looking for with this new scheme. So that's really good. And that's going to help us when we think about trying to account for VAT when we've got to make a sale. And we can use that new percentage to really help out. But what if we need to look at contractors and how that's going to affect us? Let's have a look and see what happens. So at the name, I've now got a supplier called CIS Subcontractor. From there, I'm going to press new and I'm going to just put a bill in there for now. And let's say for this bill, remember, it has to be first of the third 21. Let's say it was for a thousand pounds. And from a VAT point of view, I want to be using this new one. It's 20% reverse charge CIS. And what you can see down the bottom here is it's going to split it for us beautifully. It's going to show that the one thousand pound was there, 200, and the one thousand pound minus 200 just there. With that in mind, I need to press save and close. Let's see what's happened to our VAT account. I've got 200 shown as output, 200 shown as input with zero to pay, 2,000 sales, 1,000 purchases. That's exactly what I want to see. And if I just go in and look at one of these outputs, that's that bill that's been generated going in then out again, effectively creating that reverse charge. So by using these new elements, it is really, really easy for us to get this right. But there are certain things to look out for. So let's just have a look at what we've got to be a little bit careful of. That's making sure that going forward, our invoices are showing the right amount. So we created a brand new CIS customer. Let's go and have a look at that one. And print or preview. This is the invoice that's going to go out. Now we've got to make sure that this VAT code is shown here. And... I would make sure that you've got some form of statement to explain that you're using the reverse charge. And again, we did that in that other video and we covered that in more detail. 
but I would make sure that you are showing this element here and the VAT code there. To be 100% sure, you'd want your VAT summary turned on so that it splits the VAT codes for you. Unfortunately though, this doesn't seem to be working now, but I expect that's something to get fixed in future time. To prove this, if I'd have put something else in, say maybe I had some other work that didn't fall in that reverse charge, then what I'd expect to see is when I do my print and preview, I'd expect it to be split here and I'd want that 20% RCCIS to go there as well. Currently it's not doing that, but that's something to keep an eye out, something to go forward with. And there we have it. One feature that's been asked for for a lot and just in time for our first of March change. You can see that it actually does make your life a lot easier by having those additional reverse charge VAT codes within the system itself. Don't forget to be a bit more savvy with it as well. For example, your services, you can opt so that every time you have a CIS service that the reverse charge is being applied to it correctly. I've also seen people who've used that description box there to write your little statement so that it only appears when it's applicable. Either way, just make sure you have that statement in place and also make sure that you're comfortable with using these new, these new codes. When to use the codes, how to use the codes and everything else, that's going to be covered more from HMRC themselves. So I'll put a link down below into when to use them, why to use them and everything else. But hopefully this video has been useful for you. Hopefully you're now able to be able to keep yourself compliant and be able to go forward and make sure that you've got everything in the right place. If you want more content like this, don't forget to use the like and subscribe button. This is exactly the sort of content that we do over here on this channel. And with that, I hope to see you in the next video. It's been an absolute pleasure as always to do this video for you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we stay in bed My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks Chat, Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.